With Phase 4 Season of Discovery literally only a couple days away, I think it's time we start making a tier list for our DPS healers and tanks. Most of you probably already know where you're going to be playing for Phase 4, but you might be curious on what the probability is that you're actually getting into a raid, whether easy or hard, and just how your class is doing in general. We've gotten data from the PTR, and it's time to really just go over it and see where everybody lands. So, first starting with Fire Mage. Fire Mage is honestly going to depend a little bit on whether or not Molten Core has some kind of like fire resist mechanic, like uh, Normaganda bleeds and diseases burn is all uh, decreased by like 20%. So if they do something like that for Molten Core for fire damage, it's going to go down a little bit in damage. However, it really isn't going to matter too much because their damage is just absolutely insane. Um, not the best slug of the team, but it's pretty much a general gist of it. Pretty much hovering around 3k is where uh, fire mages are right now. Um, so even if they get decreased a little bit, they're still going to be just destroying the logs and the meters. Um, and because of that, they're just, they're S tier. They bring, obviously, mage utility and just high damage. In terms of frost, um, we're going to put them over here at A tier because they're not doing nearly as much damage as fire. However, you don't play them for that necessarily. You play them more for the support that they give to fire mages, as well as shadow priests through, uh, it's winter's chill. Um, increasing that chance that they get to crit. Really good really good support DPS. It's hovering at around 2k right now, and if you just really take a look, that's, I mean, pretty much average. So, you just have an average DPS, but it's getting a really nice bust to pretty much everybody else. Definitely worth at least one slot in your raid, as long as you have the Fire Mages and Shadow Priest to benefit from it. Next up, we have Feral DPS. Um, obviously, as an alliance, you're pretty much always going to want a Feral DPS. In your rage for your melee groups um simply because of that uh it's uh, we're gonna actually probably put it at the top of a tier because the damage is really nice it's just not up there in that like upper echel echelon but it's it's teetering on it if you're really good at feral and for alliance obviously we need one per group for horde you have the option of going enhancement shaman uh which we'll get to later but obviously it's just a lot more required for Alliance, and so it's always going to be higher up on the tier for Alliance, unless they're just dominating, which they aren't, but they're still up there. Balance Druid. Balance Druid is struggling a little bit. Um, it's hovering around that 2k DPS mark. Um, so like I said, like with the Frost Mage, it's pretty good. Yeah, the issue is it's not really... It really deserves some more damage. It's not doing the damage that it really needs to, and it kind of needs some more. The issue with buffing them is that they're just they get in PvP, and so it's kind of hard for Blizzard to buff them without just making them even more broken in PvP. So, balance is more of a B tier. You're probably gonna find uh, one balance druid in a raid, in that uh that caster group simply for the three percent crit buff, but it's nothing that you're gonna really look to stack ever. Um. So because of that, it's in uh, it's in B tier. You're probably gonna see one, but it's not it's not guaranteed. Marksmanship hunter, and I'm also gonna put survival hunter, um, because you really for MC, you really just want one hunter, um, because of the heart of the lion now brings the melee version, uh, the melee tree shot aura damage is now on heart of the lion, and so and it's raid wide, so. With one hunter, you're giving everybody out of the lion for that extra 10% stats, as well as all of the melee damage. You really don't need any more, and there's honestly not enough room in the raid to put another one in, strictly for damage. So, depending on what your hunter want to play, you're going to be bringing one of them. The MM hunter is doing, I believe, I believe they're doing around the same DPS as the uh, survival tree hunter the survival tree hunter by the way isn't necessarily a melee hunter it's a melee moving hunter as they've changed it for phase four to go in and out of melee it's a lot higher skill cap than ranged or melee hunter um so i do not recommend it unless you're really good at the game because you will not be keeping up in damage with the ranged hunters unless you know what you're doing um but whichever one your guild decides to play you're probably going to be you're going to be bringing one hunter to your raid in general period 
um, but it's just not enough to stack it. If we look at some of the charts, let me see if I can find one of our hunter logs. I think here, 2.7 around that. So that's, well, that's what you can expect from your hunters around that mark. Next up, we have the Warlocks. So the Warlocks of Affliction and Destro are actually quite close. So here's the Warlock Bagel. It's currently on the Warlock Discord for uh, Classic Sod. And you can see Fire is ever so slightly beating out Shadow. Um, the thing is, with the Warlock Rune Mark of Chaos, they really kind of have to take that now. Um, as it makes it so whenever they just apply Curse of Wreck, it just also applies Curse of Elements and Curse of Shadow, as well as the 10% damage buff is now an 11% damage buff. And because of that, they're really going to just have to take the hit and pretty much play uh, this build over this build, unless you have multiple Warlocks. Um, because as we'll get into later, at least for Shadow Priests, they're not taking Eye, uh, Eye of the Void anymore because this 100 or 200 DPS loss is like three times more than the DPS loss it is now for Shadow Priest to take Eye of the Void. And then you only get one of them, one of the curses. So because of that, Warlocks are kind of stuck with uh, taking Mark of Chaos, um, but it's a really good raid utility. And if we look at the Patchwork uh, test fights, which Patchwork test fights aren't everything, sure. Um, it shows pretty much what you can do by just standing still and blasting. Um, so it'll be somewhat variant during prog, but it gives us a little bit of an idea. Um, you can see it's hovering right around uh, 2.4k. These are some locks from the Discord. Uh, this is a Affliction lock, this is Destro lock. You can see they're pretty much equal, pretty much even. Um, so in my personal opinion, I think because... We have over here, Mark of Chaos, a build for fire, for Destro fire, and over here you don't. Simply because of that, uh, Destro is just going to be higher ranked than Affliction, because you're going to want it. In your, you're just, you're going to want that over an Affliction in your raid, as well as because they're doing slightly better damage, anyways. Uh, next up, we have Shadow Priest, uh, my main. So some might call me biased, but I think this is pretty much true for every single prog phase uh, as this tier list is really only for prog not for farm shadow priest will pretty much always be s tier um the vampiric embrace is just so good for farm it's insane um it helps your hero lizard a lot um especially when the concert is hard um as well as now shadow priests are getting a vampiric touch which is going to be increasing everybody's mana and pretty much making everybody full mana the entire fight because the amount of mana regen it gives is absolutely insane. If you look at the damage charts, this was just the last fight. Um, I believe I got the number one currently on all of the logs. Yep. Uh, by the way, I know a lot of people are looking at this. If you look at the parse numbers, these are not all of the parses. A lot of the parses are registering wrong. And only recently did all of these actually register as a kill. They were all actually considered wipes for some reason. Um, so a lot of the parses are bugged and not actually showing up. So take this with a grain of salt more than it just the fact that it's on test work and you're just blasting. But also take it with more of a grain of salt because it's not all of the logs. I can tell you for a fact, this is not even close to the highest prop palette of damage I've seen. <laughs> highest prop palette of damage I've seen is around 2 2k. So I can tell you not all the logs are here. Um, but for Shadow... On average, um, this is more of the high end. I actually, the final three kills were the ones that were around this high end, and that's what boosted up this uh, average. And the reason for that is because we had multiple locks giving us uh, improved shadow bolt, which increases our damage by quite a bit. Um, but on average, you're probably going to see shadow around 2k, um, as the rotation now is pretty damn easy. Um, you're pretty much just spamming Mind Spike and then using Mind Blast on cooldown outside of your opener. Um, with Shadow or Death also, uh, every other Mind Blast rotation, it's extremely easy. And so because of that, you're going to see consistently probably Shadow Priest doing around 2k damage and 
you get a ton of utility to your raid. Um, it's just going to be invaluable for prog and I highly recommend trying to find one. Um, except you're probably going to be throwing them to the side of the road as soon as farm happens because once farm happens they pretty much fall off a cliff and just drop down the tier list. But for prog, definitely S tier. Rat Paladin. So, Rat Paladin, I'm going to put in the B tier. Um, for our kills, uh, I don't know what the specific one was, but for the most part, they're hovering around 2k. If they're really lucky, like uh, crit wise and stuff, they might hit like 2.4, I think is the high end that we saw. But they aren't doing amazing damage. Um, and I'm gonna put them really at the bottom for the pure reason of I know we're not on the other tier list yet but Prop Paladin is insane and you're probably gonna be bringing one to Prog if not two um, Holy Paladin also insane going to be bringing one to Prog you really don't need Rhett for its blessings you don't really need Rhett for its damage um, the only thing you might need it is for the one weapon the one two hander that has a proc chance to decrease or to increase like spell damage taken by 15% for five seconds or whatever it is but outside of that you're not going to be bringing a ret unfortunately unless you just can't find a prop paladin or a holy paladin it's just it's just not there unfortunately um next we have rogues rogues are going to be in the s tier as they are absolutely blasting uh, you might have seen that they got nerfed on PTR, the Mutilate builds. Um, it's still looking like it's like it's still semming insanely high um, in previous gear. Um, even if it ends up being bad, the Sword build is doing pretty much the exact same amount of damage, if not just a little bit less. So, Rogues are absolutely blasting. Um, they bring a Cult Poison now, which is really good for casters and just hunters and boomies, as well as their own poisons and they're just overall really good highly recommend having some rogues in your group for prog gonna be blasting um warriors warriors i believe depends on how many melee groups you have but for where every melee group you do have you're going to want at least one warrior for prog simply because they bring the half pretty much half 50 percent world buff so every single time you're wiping in prog they're just going to give your melee group pretty much half a world buff as well as battle shout on top of that um their damage isn't looking too amazing we didn't have the best warriors in these groups but in terms of the very top warriors the highest that we saw them hitting was about 2.5k for like the very top warriors um so i would expect them around 2k 2.1k probably so they're not a class that you're going to be wanting to stack anymore but you're definitely going to want one of them per melee group Next up we have the shamans. So enhancement shaman being enhancement shaman. Um, it doesn't show it too much here, but enhancement actually this one drops a little bit because people stopped testing it. But because it didn't get changed the second one, uh we might be able to change it if we do two weeks, but it's the highest I've seen I think was a 2.9. It really just depends on your RNG. Um because of that, I'm gonna be putting it in the same tier as Feral. Honestly, despite being Horror Alliance for, purely for Wind Fury and da on damage, probably pick either or. Um, Feral more consistent damage, enhancement more of a range depending on your RNG. Um, however, the difference between Feral and Enhance is that Enhance brings a lot of utility that it, Feral does. Even Feral also does the same compared to Shaman. It just depends on which one you want. However, because we're going into Molten Core, Enhancement Shaman brings the Fire Resistance Totem, and because of that, purely, I put them above Feral, Feral DPS. Next we have Ellie. Ellie is down here, um, simply because it's pretty much the same case as Rhett. It's not doing the most damage. It's doing around 2k from like the, the three logs that people actually tested because no one's playing it. Um, it's just not looking good for Ellie Shaman. It's just Enhancement Shaman is doing so much better. Um, I just I don't recommend Ellie for PV uh, for PVE. PVP though, 
LE is absolutely pumping. Um, so if you're all about PvP, by all means, Elemental Shaman. You could probably just make a group of like, tw what, full group of Elemental Shamans just literally locking down the Black Rack Mountain entrances. You just, nobody's getting in. You're just gonna just electrocute everybody. There's no shot. Um, but for PvE, uh, I, I would probably stick to Enhancement Shaman. Uh, last but not least, we have our Arcane Mage and BM Hunter. Um, unfortunately, the other specs are just insanely better than them. Uh, as you can see, I really only had one Arcane Mage that was uh, doing much. We had an Arcane Mage healer coming in, but I mean, it really didn't look anything different. And BM Hunter, it's just play an MM Hunter. It's just a god outscaled. It's just kind of how it is. But that is how it's currently looking for DPS in it phase four of season of discovery for molten core remember this is a prog tier list not a farm tier list things could change after people get their tier sets but for prog this is what i would recommend if you have any comments go ahead and leave them down below uh, whether you agree or disagree with me uh, i'll make sure to take a look if you have any questions i'll try to answer them also in the description below if you are alliance it's only a pre uh pre-questing guide uh, I'll link it in the description and I'll pin it in the comments as well. So thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Let's hope to see you in phase four. Peace.